Welcome back everyone, it is Eric from Rare Candy, and today we are back checking out some more Japanese tournament results, courtesy of our friends over at PokemonCard.io. And this is gonna be results for the month of September. Now, yes, I am aware we are already like a week-ish into October at this point, but to make a long story short, I originally wanted this video up right before Peoria Regionals, but my flight got canceled. I had to scramble to figure out a way to get there. And so this video fell by the wayside and we are finally getting around to it today. So in that time period, we have seen the massive Japanese Champions League tournament, which I imagine a lot of you are already a little bit familiar with. It's been pretty well documented by the community, so we're not gonna spend too much time on that today, but we have seen a number of smaller tournaments you know, over the weeks since that major tournament, which have yielded some pretty interesting results, which I definitely wanted to show off today. Now, it is worth pointing out, these are gonna be local shop tournaments, so these are gonna be much smaller events. These are not 1,200 person regionals or anything like that. So we do need to keep that in the back of our mind when we are looking at these winning decks today. But before we get into the actual list that we're gonna be checking out, if you guys can, just do me a favor, leave a like on that video, help feed that always hungry YouTube algorithm, and also be sure to check out sponsors of today's video over at pokecrossword.com. If you're not familiar with them already, every week they post these really cool Pokemon and Pokemon TCG themed puzzles, including a brand new guess that Pokemon puzzle type they recently launched. And on top of that, every month they do these massive PTCGO code giveaways. All you have to do is head on over to their Twitter and follow the instructions on their giveaway post. I'll have links to all this stuff today down below in the description. But let's go ahead and jump into these winning Japanese deck lists. So of course, guys, as I already mentioned, we do have the massive Japanese Champions League tournament. We're not gonna spend too much time on this just because again, it has been pretty well covered by the community at this point, but this was definitely a mass event that we have to at least talk about here. Of course, the winner, as you guys probably know at this point, was Giratina V-Star, pretty straightforward vanilla list, just pretty much straight consistency, not too many bells and whistles here. Uh, looking a little bit deeper into the top eight though, we had a couple of other notable inclusions. Uh, we had a Rotom V Star deck, though it does not actually have a deck list, but it looks like they were playing the uh, Tower of Darkness. Very interesting if that is the case. Um, but again, kind of a shame we don't actually have a deck list to go off of here. But another interesting deck that did make into top eight was the Lost Zone Kyogre deck. So if you guys aren't familiar with the Kyogre back from Celebrations, it has a pretty cool attack. It's like two water and a colorless, and you discard the top five cards of your deck, I think it is, and you choose two of your opponent's bench Pokemon, and it does 50 for each energy you discard it in this way to those Pokemon. So, uh, you know, kind of gimmicky, but hey, it made it all the way into top eight at a massive thousand person event. So gotta be something to it, right? We do have another deck list. This one is a little bit different. It, as you can see, it does not have the Crabominable and the Zygarde and all that. I'm trying to figure out what this card is here. I think this is a Ranguru, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, but yeah, same sort of concept, guys. They're just trying to soften up things with the Kramerit and Sableye kind of as usual. And then come in with the Kyogre as probably like a late game finisher to take these giant bench KOs. So that's the general gist. So we have this, but then there's also a couple of other winning Lost Box decks that caught my attention over the, the past couple weeks as well. So the next one we have here is going to be a Lunalo deck. And it seems the Japanese are trying their hardest to dust off these bad cards from celebrations and make them good. Uh, Lunala is going to be another one of these cards. If you guys aren't familiar with it, this one has an attack. It's for two colorless energy and you double the amount of damage counters on your opponent's Pokemon, which is pretty decent given that we have cards like Cramorant and Sableye to get these cheap attacks in. And even though you're not taking these big KOs, you can maybe come in with a Lunala in the mid game, double all your opponent's damage and take some big KOs. So. And you can see the only base energy the deck is playing is going to be the psychic energies for the Sableye. And then from there, they are reliant on captures and twin energies uh, to round out their deck list. And then their only other non colrus supporter is a copy of Bruno, which is very interesting. But it kind of makes sense, you know, like you're not really trying to boss stuff every turn because you can just double damage counters on the field that way. So Lunala takes up a lot of space, but at the same time, you also free up a lot of space by going with this strategy as opposed to more traditional uh, strategies. But the deck looks, you know, about as consistent as you would imagine. There's really not any bells and whistles. You know, just the pokey years, ball switch cards and rare candies and switching cards. Can't really ask for much more than that. 
But speaking of interesting Lost Box variants, next up we have a Zamazenta and Zamazenta V-Star deck here. And there's actually a couple of these that did wind up winning over the past couple of weeks. Uh, this is one of the ones that did include the V-Star, but a lot of these just included the baby Zamazenta uh, down here. I believe its attack is 100 plus 120 if your opponent took a knockout on the previous turn. So it's definitely a much heavier hitting Pokemon for the Lost Box deck. It's also kind of tanky, I believe has 130 HP, and then its ability reduces damage done to it by 30, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, and then of course the Zamazenta V and V Star. Uh, the Zamazenta V here, this artwork, this is just a reprint of the one we got back in Brilliant Star. So it's another revenge attacker. And the Zamazenta V Star, if you're not familiar with this one, it has essentially Zacian V's attack, and then it has an ability uh, or a V-Star power that reduces damage done to all of your Pokemon by a hundred. So very cool deck that we have here. Definitely a curious experiment with this once we get the Zamazenta V-Star. They are playing the three copies of Serena as well. That is a card that has been catching on. Definitely looks to be the most impactful card that we've seen from Incandescent Arcana. That was Japan's previous set from like a month ago that will eventually be in our uh, Silver Tempest set this fall. Yeah, again, pretty straightforward for these Lost Box decks. And speaking of Serena, we have a Reggie deck that won. And I wanted to point this one out just because they're actually playing the full four count of Serena. They are playing no boss's orders just because this is basically a boss most of the time. If you guys aren't familiar with the Serena, it allows you to discard some cards from your hand and draw up to five. Uh, but then also you can choose to play it as a boss's orders on Pokemon V, essentially. Uh, which makes sense for the Reggie deck. You don't mind discarding cards because you can get energy out of the discard with your Gigas. And uh, yeah, it's just a more consistent boss's orders essentially in the early game since you can draw cards with it instead. But next up, getting into some newer archetypes, we have Superior V-Star. This is one of the more interesting, I think, V-Stars that we got in uh, Incandescent Arcana as well. But the Superior here, as you can see, they are choosing to play it with the Inteleon engine. But the whole thing with the superior card is that it's attack, I believe it's grass, two colors, and it's 160. And then you can move your energy anywhere you want afterwards, which does open up some cool options for you. As you can see, they are choosing to play the copy of Cheryl on the deck. So the idea here is sometimes you can move all of your energy off superior, your opponent attacks into you, then you can share all that damage off and then move your energy around with your next attack yet again. So that's the general gist here. Uh, I will say it was tough for me to figure out what this card here is right behind Cheryl. It kind of looks like Piers, but I definitely could be mistaken there. Piers allows you to get uh, double turbo energy as well, which is something that Inteleon can't get you. So I'm willing to bet it's Piers, but uh, I just want to point out I'm not 100% on that. But even though we have this Inteleon version of Superior, there is another version that was popping up and winning some tournaments. That is gonna be a more streamlined version of the deck with a more traditional draw engine here. They're still playing the Superior, but they're also playing a 2-2 Leafeon V-Star line as well. I would assume most notably for the ability on Leafeon V, just because you can accelerate a grass energy on your opening turn. And that way on the next turn, all you need is a double turbo. So that seems kind of cool. They have the Cricketune to increase their maximum HP by 40. Uh, and a card that actually has popped up in a surprising number of deck lists over in Japan. I don't know what it is, but they are just on a kick with this Altaria that we have that again, also should be coming out in this fall Silver Tempest set. If you guys aren't familiar with this card, it has an attack for two colors energy. You move all your damage counters off one of your bench Pokemon onto your opponent's active. So for those turns where you can't use Cheryl and you still want to get some healing action on your superior, well, you can still just throw down double turbo on this thing, heal off your superior and maybe take a knockout in the process. So I'm not sure if this is just a gimmick or if it's actually good, but uh, you know, my initial knee jerk reaction when we saw the Saltaria was that it was kind of gimmicky. It's kind of slow, but you know, Japan, a lot of decks over there are winning with this thing. So maybe we should uh, take this thing a little bit more seriously. But speaking of the Altaria, here's another deck that caught my eye that I was really surprised to see. That's gonna be Glaceon V Max. It was a somewhat hyped card uh, from Evolving Skies. You know, it has a decent attack. The ability, it walls against Pokemon V Max. So that's why it had some attention at some point. And it really hasn't done anything since, but 
we have a deck that won in Japan over, over there apparently. And it is also making use of this brand new Altaria. Glaceon has so much HP already that most of the V-Star decks aren't knocking it out. And for those decks, they can just heal off their Glaceons with Altaria. I guess that is the idea that they have here. But they are also playing Gardevoir with this. So really interesting engine that they have here. If you guys aren't familiar with the Gardevoir, its ability allows you to look at the top two cards of your deck. I think you attach any psychic energy. I forget if it's psychic energy or energy in general, but you attach some sort of energy. Uh, so it's kind of like Intrepid Sword a little bit. Uh, but then they also have the new Curlia, which also should be coming out in Silver Tempest. It's basically just the Sensino that we have. You discard a card from your hand and draw two. So very creative deck from the guys over there in Japan. Definitely did not expect to see Glaceon or this Altaria doing so well. But the Altaria deck lists don't stop there. Up next, we have a pretty like vanilla, like Arceus deck. As you can see, it's not really playing any other partners with it. It's really just going all in on Arceus, trying to tank with it. So of course we have the 4-3 Arceus over here. We have the Radiant Gardevoir. We have the Altaria to move damage counters, but it looks like they also do play one of the Altaria that allows you to put a supporter on top of your deck. I'm pretty sure that's what this card over here is. Uh, looks like they have a Starmie V as well. They're also choosing to play the new, I think it's V Guard energy, but new special energy allows you to uh, reduce your damage by 30 by Pokemon V. So between this and the Gardevoir and the Big Charm and the Altaria, it's gonna be really difficult to actually take down these Arceus. So make uh, the deck makes sense on paper to me. Um, I will say it's interesting. I don't see any copies of Sharon's Care, but I guess you have to cut something to make room for the Altarias. Oh, I just noticed they also have the Lake Acuity over here too. So they are determined to never let Arceus go down. So up next from there, we have another Arceus deck. This is gonna be Arceus Gardevoir Gallade. And surprisingly, there were actually a couple of these winning tournaments over there. So of course they are choosing to play the Kuroya that we already looked at, allows you to discard a card from your hand, draw two. But then you have the option of evolving into either uh, the Gardevoir that we already looked at or the Gallade. So the Gallade is actually a pretty cool card, has an ability where you can search your deck for a supporter and I think put it on top of your deck. It's either on top of your deck or right into your hand. Okay, yeah, it does go right into your hand. That's actually kind of nuts for this Arceus deck. What we can do here, they can actually just grab Sharon's Care on the exact turn they need it. They can grab, you know, Raihan, Roxanne, these like turn specific cards on the exact turn that you want them. So that's really cool. Kind of wish they had a pal pad in here. That seems like it would have been a really cool inclusion just to be able to like keep reusing these one ofs, like pal pad them back after you use them, immediately search them back out. So this deck seems like a lot of fun. I'm really curious to see if the like Curlia engine winds up catching on since we do have a couple different Gardevoir and Glade uh, that are going to be in the format. But it looks like the guys over in Japan are making good use of this and it is winning tournaments. And this next deck is another instance of that. We have a Ho-Oh V deck with the whole Curlia Gardevoir engine that we have here. Now, it doesn't look like they're playing the Gallade in this one. It looks like they're focusing pretty much just on the Curlia and Gardevoir, which actually does seem kind of cool because you can accelerate your basic energies with Gardevoir, which does fuel the attacks of your ho OV because it's more damage for every basic energy that you have attached. Now, it looks like they don't play too many energy in their actual deck. It looks like, like literally just like one of each type other than fire. It looks like they doubled up on that one, but... Uh, that seems kind of greedy, I'm not going to lie. We have the Jirachi V, which is another card we haven't seen too much of, but every time your Ho-Oh goes down, you can take at least one of those energies, move it over to your 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 next Ho-Oh, so that's cool. This seems kind of gimmicky, like I could be wrong. I mean, it did win a tournament, but again, these are smaller tournaments, so this I, I'm curious how many of these like Gardevoir lists are uh, wins due to the engine actually being good or just due to the smaller nature of the tournaments. Uh, that these are appearing in. But I love the creative deck building, if nothing else, guys. Okay, and here's a deck that uh, I can safely say I would have never expected to see, ever. <laughs> we have Ursaluna V with Blastoise. But if you guys aren't familiar with the Ursaluna, I, I will forgive you, it's not a great card. Um, but it has an ability, reduces damage done to it by 30, and then it's attack, there's, I believe it's 220, minus 10 for every damage counter on it. 
So as you can see, they're trying to just tank and ensure these Ursalunas don't go down and don't reduce their damage output. So they're pairing that with Blastoise, which actually does have kind of a crazy ability here. Uh, so it ends your turn whenever you use its ability, but you search your deck for six energy cards and attach them to your Pokemon. And that does not specify basic energy. So what they are trying to do, and I guess did do since they did win a tournament with this thing, uh, they use this ability on Blastoise to accelerate at least all four stone fightings and probably one V-Guard energy at least and throw them down on Ursaluna to get an insane damage reduction because stone fighting is minus 20 damage for each one attached. That's minus 80. Then for V-Guard energy, I, I'm pretty sure these don't stack. You can only apply one of these at a time if I remember the wording of the card right, but this is a minus 30 reduction from Pokemon V. So that's a minus 110. Actually, once you factor in the ability, it's minus 140. <laughs> Anytime someone attacks into Ursaluna. And then if Lake Acuity sticks as well, that's another minus 20 reduction. So minus 160 every turn. And then you have a couple of healing cards just to, uh, you know, for some, some extra measure to ensure that you don't go down. This is definitely a very convoluted combo that is reliant on your opponent not having an insane or explosive start, but there, I mean, it's cool. Like this actually makes me want to try out this deck if nothing else, because before I was just going to say Ursaloon is awful. Blastoise is awful. We're not messing with these cards, but this is, I think a pretty cool list if nothing else. And, uh, you know, probably will be pretty fun to try out on PTCGO. So next up we have the breaks in deck is finally catching on and winning some events over in Japan. So of course the breaks in, it has the attack at 60 damage for every Serena in your discard pile, which is great because Serena is a pretty playable card. Uh, you already want to play these in a given turn and you can pitch away the extra ones and do big damage. So 240 for just a single twin energy or 220 with a double turbo is pretty good on just a single prize, lovable, searchable Pokemon here. And as you can see, they are choosing to play the Meow Stick as well. That's the one that allows you to get uh, two supporters out of your deck. So you can grab two Serenas, play one, pitch the other one away. Uh, but they are also playing a copy of Radiant Eevee, which is kind of bizarre to me. It's like for each different type of Pokemon you have in play, you search your deck for a card, put it into your hand. Pretty sure that's the effect here. So I guess the idea behind the inclusion is you can grab like all of your Serenas at once if you have like, uh, you know, like a Fennekin, Goon, and an Esper in play or something like that. So that seems... I don't know. I probably wouldn't be playing Radiant Eevee in this deck, but uh, it, it's a cool inclusion to see. Definitely a card I didn't expect to pop up in any decks anytime soon. Okay, next up we have another curveball of a deck to show you guys. We have a Kling Kling deck. So Kling Kling, it has an ability where whenever you evolve into it, I believe you search your deck for three energies or three basic energies and attach them to your Pokemon in any way that you like. And as you can see, they're choosing to pair it with Dragonite V predominantly here. Uh, Dragonite V actually does hit for some pretty good numbers, hits for 250. So with a choice belt, which of course they do play, they can reach 280, which definitely makes it a much better attacker and helps overcome that clunky multi-energy attack cost that they have here. And then they're also playing the Mawile V-Star, which I'm assuming they're doing just for the V-Star power. Uh, the V-Star power, if you guys aren't familiar with it, it's basically just Guzma. You choose one of your opponent's bench Pokemon to come into the active, and then you also switch in the process. Uh, but I mean, I guess they could still attack with it. It attacks for colorless energy. Um, if it go comes from the bench to the active this turn, does 160. So that seems kind of cool. I don't know if there's a specific matchup that's supposed to be for though. Uh, but we do have the amazing rare Kyogre in the deck as well. Uh, I guess for some crazy bench sniping, since you can use Kling Kling to accelerate a bunch of different energies and, uh, you know, get it up and running in a single turn. Um, the deck is playing four Bird Keeper, so they are choosing to play the Rowlet here for the 60 damage snipe. We have the Radiant Greninja, which, of course, you can draw cards with, but also you can actually attack within this deck since they are playing the Kling Kling. You can accelerate those three energies use that 90 damage sniping attack, which actually can fix your math against V maxes for your Dragonite. So that seems kind of cool. I don't know if I'm sold on this. Like, I feel like the Lost Engine might just be an easier way at accomplishing the same thing. I could be wrong. You know, I'm not the one who won a tournament with Kling Kling. So what do I know? 
But uh, hey, again, I just love a lot of the creativity we've been seeing over these past couple weeks over in Japan. And then the last deck I want to show off today is going to be a deck using the new Alolan Vulpix V-Star, which is like one of the big mascots or really the mascot of Incandescent Arcana and the upcoming Silver Tempest set. So as you'd expect, they are choosing to play it with Palkia V-Star, but they are also, it looks like they are playing a 1-1 line of Ice Rider Calyrex as well. So they are foregoing the giant one-shot potential of Kirin VMAX and going with the Vulpix instead, which, you know, does change your uh, matchup spread a little bit. So the Vulpix is pretty cool. It's attacked as 160, goes through any effects, and then it walls against Pokemon with abilities. So that's actually pretty cool. That means things like Cramorant can't hit you, but also other Pokemon that are popular in the format like Arceus or Palkia. And then the V-Star power, I believe it's 70 for each Pokemon V that your opponent has in play. So it gives you like a one-shot option against Mew, which is pretty cool as well. Now we'll say there didn't appear to be a ton of Vulpix decks winning. So this doesn't appear to be like it's going to be the big dominant mascot Pokemon that Giratina, Palkia, and Arceus have been in the past couple sets. But it's nice to know that the card is doing, it's doing something over there at the very least. But that's going to do it for all the deck lists I want to show off today, guys. That being said, don't get misconstrued. There were a ton of other winning decks. I definitely encourage you to head over to PokemonCard.io and sift through the different Japanese tournament results for the month of September. You know, a lot of the standard tried and true decks were still doing very well, like Arceus decks, Lost Box decks, Mew, etc. But I just want to show off some of the more interesting ones that I think might not be on some people's radars. But like I said, if you do want to see all of the winning deck lists, I will have links down below in the description to PokemonCard.io. But that being said, guys, I want to hear from you. Which of these decks today has you the most intrigued? And if you had some fun taking a look at these Japanese tournament results with me today, feel free to leave a like on the video. Or if you're feeling a little extra generous, you can always become a patron at patreon.com slash rarecandytcg or pick up some merch at rarecandytcg.com. Links to everything will be down below in the description, but as always, thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.